are made visible is also through the narratives that are present in our movement. And in particular, also in the description of this session, we mentioned this hero narrative. So what do we mean by that? By hero narrative, we mean this tendency in uh, software and in technology in general, for which uh, we follow this charismatic uh, figure who don't sleep at night uh, just to make one comment after the other. And it seems, uh, on one hand, it seems like uh, in the end, they are the only one working the project, even though everyone knows that it's not like that. But on the other hand, it's also a model of a, a work model which is not healthy, not, not for the person itself, but uh, also for the community at large. This is because, uh, of course, uh, there are many problems that can arise from this kind of dynamics where there is this hero which somehow set the level of the collaboration in a specific project, so the person who do most becomes the example. And since we also, another concept which is interesting, uh, we didn't talk about that, is the concept of duocracy, so the ones who do more are also the ones who take the decision in the end, and this is something which uh, can work, but also has some problems, because for example, uh, in this kind of context, so sometimes it's difficult to uh, to tell the difference between a behavior which is authoritative, which is a behavior of someone uh, who say or does something because knows something, or a behavior which becomes authoritarian in a way. Because, for example, uh, another narrative is that of the benevolent dictator. No, it's not fun. It's not uh, nobody. We don't want to have a dictator, even though he or she are benevolent. We want to break this narrative. Another problem is the fact that uh, these kind of uh, processes are detrimental for the long-term sustainability of projects. Because if there is just one person or a two person doing all the work, what, is that, what, what happens if these people burn out or uh, they just decide to do something else in their life? The project doesn't exist. And of course, uh, it leads to also missing perspective on uh, ways in which uh, uh, a project could be improved because uh, there is only one person who takes all the decisions and who somehow is regarded by the community as a kind of uh, yeah, hero who anyway knows everything because he's the one uh, or she's the one who wrote most. Then uh, we also miss opportunities to uh, improve uh, a project through external factors. But the good news is that these kind of, uh, uh, of processes can be mitigated. I don't know if they can be resolved at all, because in the end we are people and there are some people who like to take leadership on uh, and some people who don't like it, so there will always be some kind of imbalance in a group. So what we can do is to keep this imbalance in check and discuss about it, and also do something about it. And we could do something on the more local level or on the more uh, global, um, I think a more uh, global approach. If we focus on the uh, local level, and uh, here are our feminist uh, principles and practices come into play, uh, two, uh, two practices which uh, come from the feminist tradition, which could be uh, useful uh, in uh, also in software communities, are first the practice of care, and this is something uh, which uh, I think that in the past years have been also uh, discussed more. Uh, so it's the idea that if we are part uh, of a group, uh, everyone uh, needs to take care of the other. So if you are uh, if you are part of a group and uh, you see someone who is going to burn out, you can tell them, hey, maybe you are doing too much. Maybe can I help you somehow? Maybe you want to slow down, etc. And the second point is skill sharing, which is of course not just a feminist uh, practice, it's something which exists and nobody can uh, put a hand on it, but uh, it is true that uh, in the past uh, years uh, in uh, uh, tech, uh, there, there have been many feminist uh, tech skill sharing uh, events made uh, in a kind of more welcoming environment uh, uh, and uh, Things like that. And what is important about uh, skill sharing is that it's something that sometimes uh, uh, is taken for granted. If you are in a group, if there is someone who knows how to do something, okay, there is that someone. So that kind of skill is not shared, but this also is what leads to uh, the hero and the person who 
is the only one who knows how something works. So also having this kind of sharing within a group, for example, always working in pair is something which can uh, uh, decrease uh, this kind of uh, authoritarian problem. But the truth is that uh, we didn't really mostly want to talk uh, about uh, care and how to be nice human beings because we think that uh, you are perfectly capable of understanding that and there are a lot of resources on the internet. What we would really want to talk about uh, is power. Power in uh, communities, in projects, and uh, how this can affect the communities and how to deal with it. Uh, quickly read the definition that we found in the Geek Feminist uh, Wiki, that is geekfeminist.wikia.com, about inter intersectionality. I have no idea if the term sounds familiar, maybe to some of us. So it's uh, the idea of dealing uh, with power in a systemic and long term perspective. It's used to deal with power in a systemic and long term perspective. And the concept used to describe the ways in which oppressive institutions, racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, Ableism, xenophobia, racism, etc., etc., all the isms are all often interconnected. When you are into one of the schemes, you might be into others of one, and they cannot be examined separately from one another. So, um, the, the definition says the concept first came from Nicholas Pollock in Bolo Show in 1989 and is largely used in critical theories, especially feminist theory when discussing system. <coughs> Why is that useful? Um, because we want to be able to have a honest and conversation about power, to understand the whole ties of it, where we come from is useful in this conversation, how people are tied to one another is useful in this conversation, how we can uh, change the relationship that have been tying in between us since a generation is useful in that. So uh, there are two uh, aspects we talk the, uh, talking this on the on in the internal level, the hero narrative but also on the external level. Who are we uh, as power structures in relation to other power structures that we are facing? And this uh, needs to be acknowledged. I always say when I see Google logo on our screens, uh, it hurts me because I don't want to see them. And I want, I want to, us to be reflect on our situation and on, on our position uh, in, in front of them. We are not on an equal level and this should be acknowledged. Yes, so uh, the idea is that uh, reasoning through the lenses of intersectionality is something which is not going to give answers, but it's something which can help in uh, asking questions about uh, what we do. So the idea, uh, here we are talking again uh, mostly on an external level, so how as a group uh, we can uh, more effective, effectively counter uh, those powers uh, which uh, uh, in in a direct, uh, for example, the surveillance capitalism, which was mentioned before, also in an uh, indirect way can harm uh, um, uh, our projects and uh, ourselves. So, uh, okay, so, let me draw the slides. <laughs> okay, so, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Again, the idea is about asking questions, and so uh, we have listed some uh, questions which would be interesting to discuss in the centralized projects and uh, which uh, are concerned with the wider impact uh, uh, of the project. So the first one first question uh, which could be asked is, okay, what is the impact of my work uh, on the job market? What is the impact of uh, what, uh, in which way can I do what I am doing in a way which makes it also easier for other people to earn a living on that, for example. Another question would be what kind of uh, users, and uh, especially non-users, I am excluding in my project. So, for example, uh, if I think uh, about uh, uh, a very nice uh, mm, something uh, for, uh, uh, I don't know, health, and then uh, there is a wide category of people, maybe older people who are not familiar with the technology, are not going to learn it, then uh, you are excluding all these people. So maybe try to think uh, also how to reproduce what you want to do in a more uh, kind of analogic way or uh, how to include the, um, 
the, the pool of the possible users of the technology. And another very important thing, what is the impact of, my, of the product on the wider environment? For example, uh, we have a lot of electronic waste, so how heavy is uh, your uh, system, your uh, software, your whatever? Does it work on other computer and all these kind of things? Do I need to use it on a phone or it doesn't work? And uh, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, and in general, uh, in, uh, in what kind of ways uh, uh, I could, could be, the, the thing you are doing actually, actually be reinforcing existing problems and uh, uh, inequalities. Yeah, and this is to close up. So it's thinking about organization in a systemic way because uh, the system we're living in is, is the whole society. It's, it has uh, evolution, the interdependency everywhere. So we need to in include external actors in developing decisions, even if uh, people are not directly concerned. We should not take them as externalities. Uh, you, of course, we uh, should focus on positive speech, but not only. We should also actively deal with the presence of problems and uh, not be afraid of voicing them. We can um, yeah, respond on a larger scale. So this was your proposition. <laughs> yes. So, um, yes, the, the idea to conclude is that if we want to uh, to make decentralized software projects uh, in order to imagine uh, a world which could exist outside of the capitalism narrative and uh, a world uh, in which technology could really be used as a tool to help ourselves and not uh, as a tool uh, to be uh, oppressed and to be controlled, then uh, we do need to, um, to produce and establish more visible uh, narratives uh, about uh, about uh, existing uh, uh, counterpowers and uh, non hegemonic technological uh, projects uh, and um, and communities. And uh, what what also we wanted to say, sorry, our slides got a little bit mixed up uh, from the first version, so we kind of lost the um, uh, the, the train in the end. But so yeah, the idea is that it's okay to be uh, political and uh, to voice uh, uh, political values even uh, in a decentralized software projects because uh, in the end uh, the people who are doing technology are not doing technology just for their self, themselves but they're doing it uh, for a larger society and so there are ways to make the involvement of this uh, larger social group uh, more visible. So for example, if there is some uh, a political issue in which uh, the members of your community feel to be vocal about, for example, global warming or the people uh, dying in the Mediterranean. What's wrong about, uh, I don't know, expressing uh, actively solidarity towards these people or uh, writing on your website that uh, this is a problem uh, for you and for your projects and that you don't want people who don't think that that is a problem using your software, for example. Because in this way, it will be, it's possible to strengthen the, the relationship uh, between uh, different uh, communities and different groups uh, which, uh, with or without the technology, share the same aim uh, of uh, fast fostering a world uh, in which uh, we can live uh, with more freedom and uh, more uh, autonomy and uh, yes, decide what we want to do with uh, our lives. So yeah, and this is uh, for the activity of uh, Vendelo that I uh, hope will maybe have a song with you.
to discuss and maybe raise the question is that most of us who are So what I want to say actually is that uh, uh, you mentioned about uh, um, uh, saying our political views and our concerns and uh, stuff like that. Uh, but uh, what I want to say is that uh, a lot of people in the tech industry uh, think that they're uh, only involved in tech and uh, uh, tech is not involved in uh, politics. But uh, in reality it is um, every decision that you make in your life has a political consequence whether it's small or, or big. So um, I want to raise the question of how can we raise awareness that uh, uh, to people that uh, um, you can have a, a rational and calm discussions uh, about uh, problems, uh, like a discussion with uh, Google employee about the uh, future of the internet of the web and uh, about the market of Chrome and uh, Firefox. And he understood my, um, uh, the facts that I was presenting him and the, the danger of, of, of the web, uh, but uh, he always uh, went back and uh, came up with a new uh, uh, reason to justify Google's position. So I, I want to, um, I don't know what's the way to kind of raise awareness and uh, make people um, see certain things that, uh, and dissolve the illusion that uh, uh, tech uh, has a political consequence uh, in, the, in the community that we live in. As, yeah, I go to, to what you we were saying, it's really about raising the issues uh, in, in regards to our projects and saying, set, identifying our projects in, into this uh, response to uh, the issues you are mentioning. And say, setting it clearly, not hiding it, not saying it's, it's going to happen because the code is going to make it happen. It's also going to happen because the people are thinking. is just to talk about them, so name them, name the fact that there is politics in technology, there is politics in code, and uh, we just need to be aware of that and discuss it. So today we mentioned it, you can mention it again uh, in the next conference, uh, you will participate or uh, discuss it uh, in your community, that's the only way to make this more visible.